Hello, everybody out there. Um, today this is the title of the day for today, and um, today it is over. Um, don't have uh, too many ascended masters. Okay, you know how Jesus said, you know, uh, don't have too many masters. I want to look at that, and I was thinking about that um, ascended masters. And how uh, Jesus talks about that and how he was kind of warning us of that, of what is going on now in our end times. That many Christ will come, right? Well, many Christ will come in his name and there will be many Christ coming to proclaim themselves to be messiahs and masters and leaders and all of that. Spiritual leaders, right? And spiritual messiahs. And we see that today. They're, they're everywhere. But he warns us of this and... Um, uh, I want to take a look at that. Uh, first, let's look at James 3, 1 through 2, which talks about why you shouldn't want to be a, a master or an ascended master um, and um, why it's not good for these other ones to, you know, be proclaiming that, that that's what they are. Uh, we are to teach and to help other people, you know, but not like become a cult leader if you will and not put on our ourselves the same level as christ okay like i said before my last video uh, i sometimes for weeks i say the same type of things keep repeating it uh her there must be heresies among us why must there her be heresies among us why must uh men that have jesus's righteousness and women righteousness on us uh fall and 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 go into wrong things and do things wrong and um the people see that well, it's because um, they won't take the focus on the man or the woman, and they'll put the focus on uh, Jesus. Okay, so there's heresies among us so that uh, you see Jesus and who is the only one who is perfect. All right, so it's the same thing here where James is going to explain. Let's listen to this. James 3. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Okay. The only one who could do that was Jesus, right? Okay, that's what James is talking about. And then he goes on talking about the tongue and how it's evil and all that kind of stuff. And um, it's true. The only one who could bridle, the uh, who may not offend in word, is the word of God, Jesus. And the only one who is perfect is the perfect one, uh, Yeshua HaMashiach, you know? So, like, you don't want to... Put yourself up there to try to be a master, you know, and to be a, a ruler of the people or a controller of the people. You want to be one of the people um, with learning from the Holy Ghost and helping others, right? Uh, and you want everyone... You disciple somebody, they disciple someone else, but somebody discipled you. Um, they all got discipled from the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was kind of discipled from Jesus and then the Father, right? The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost comes and then it comes down to us. Nobody is any better than anybody else. Paul wasn't better than Peter. Peter wasn't better than John. John wasn't better than Thomas. Thomas wasn't better than James. You know what I mean? So they're all equal, you know, Uh that's why in Corinthians, I think Second Corinthians 11, uh, Paul talks about super apostles. You know, like all oh, these awesome apostles that you're saying are better than the apostles that Jesus chose. So even in the time of the Corinthians, they were saying, oh, these apostles are better over here than this apostle. But Paul's saying, these super apostles, have I not done everything that they've done? Was I not uh, from the tribe of Benjamin, a Pharisee, you know, all this stuff? If, I'm, if anybody's going to be held up to boasting, it, it should have been Paul. But Paul said, as he counted all that as rubbish is just to be with Christ right so <clears throat> you know you don't want to try to get up to be a a master okay because it's greater condemn condemnation for that and there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus right but he says right here man it's greater condemnation because <clears throat> when you learn something and um you are supposed to teach other people and help other people when you learn that thing you're not supposed to just get um wisdom it's cold here <laughs> it's freezing snowy outside you're not just supposed to get wisdom and keep it for yourself okay like sometimes like i was saying yesterday it will come to you and it's for your life right then and right now but majority of the time um you 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 the wisdom you get from the holy ghost and from the bible is to share with everyone else right okay um 
So you see that, that's what James said, you know, <laughs> uh, don't have many masters, don't be many masters. And um, we're going to see here, Jesus explains it completely and how these today, how these cult leaders are and how like, I mean, the Vatican and how they dress and how they act and how they look. Same thing with these ascended masters. Think about how they dress when they were on earth and then go back and look and see how people think they're going to come back and look. They dress a certain way. They don't look like everyone else. They don't look like the common people. Jesus looked and did common things like all the common people. He had a common job. He was a carpenter. He lived a common life, you know. He um you know, he did all those things. Even though he was God in the flesh, he was not a common man, uh, you know, spiritually, right? He was Jesus, God incarnate, but he lived a common life. Okay? He dressed a common way. Um, the clothes that he had were like clothes that his mother made that he wore over. But you know what I'm saying? So, like, he didn't dress himself up to look like, you know, like even some of the people you see on YouTube today that call themselves rabbi and all this other stuff, and they dress in Old Testament type priestly garbs. Well, this is what Jesus is speaking about here. The Pharisees and Sadducees did that. You know, he's saying, don't, they dress like that because they want attention from people. They don't want to be common like you and relate to everyone. They want to put themselves out there to look like they're better than everybody else. And I have more Gnostic wisdom and I have, you know, I'm closer to God than you are. Well, you know, relate, God is no respecter of persons, right? He loves from the worst, wretched, murdering, serial killer sinner up into the most to the person who has never done hardly any bad thing in their life he loves those people equally right so that's what we're supposed to do okay so let's listen to how jesus explains that we don't need to have ascended masters that's it's only one master and that's jesus matthew 23 then spake jesus to the multitude and to his disciples saying the scribes and the pharisees sit in moses seat all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Right, so you see what he's saying? He's saying the scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. What do a lot of people now that want to be called rabbi and all this other stuff, how they dress, how they look, they are sitting in Moses' seat. They want to be like Moses or Aaron, like that, right? But it's interesting, he says, yeah, if they teach you out of the Old Testament, if they teach you out of the Torah, follow it, but don't do the things that they're doing, because... That's not what the Father likes, right? For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Amen. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. Okay. They make broad their phylacteries. And, and that's very interesting. Their phylacteries, their boxes of Old Testament scriptures. Okay. So you ever watch some videos and like behind them they just have like... Bibles and Bibles and Bibles, you know, and they have all these books that they've read, all this knowledge of the world. Because if it's written by another man, it's knowledge of the world. It's it's tradition. It's, you know what I mean? It's not, the Holy Bible is the Word of God, okay? End all be all, the, the inherent Word of God is the Holy Bible. And if they have all these other Bibles or all these other um, books behind them and they're quoting out of that and saying all these things out of that, that's man's wisdom. And, I mean, I, I believe that the King James Bible is the inherent word of God. That's what I believe. And the pure Cambridge is, is, is very, you know, perfect. Almost, you know what I mean? It's perfect. And, um... And I put that with scripture, you know, Proverbs talks about that, that it needs to be, um, you know, through the fire and all that kind of stuff. I, I mean, I made videos about that before. But, um, I, so I don't see the need in going and having a thousand different Bibles, you know, that you need to try to go through. Now, if you want to be in apologetics and you want to read the NIV or one of the other ones and point out all the things that are wrong in it, you know, that's one thing, you know, but I... I feel that like if you're just going to read something, read the King James Bible, um, and it. I mean, you don't just have to like this one that I have is the King James Bible, but it's also like an easy reader. So like a lot of the words that like people talk about the and the and some of the words that they say that are hard to understand, they um, 
they put it in modern words, the common language of today. And like I made my video, God speaks to people in common languages. So I don't think there's anything wrong with changing it to modern words, right? As long as it's still the and the as it's supposed to be in the King James. But also at times, I'll read it and I'll go back to the pure Cambridge and compare it together. Right, I, I compare them and make sure that that's exactly right. And like I made a video too about how you can check the, you can take your Bible and go through the, <clears throat> check each uh, certain words and certain phrases if they're in there with the Pure Cambridge Edition to see how your Bible stacks up. So even if you have another Bible, <clears throat> you can check with it and see if it lines up with the pure cameras because maybe you don't have any money to go get another Bible or maybe you're in a country where this is the only Bible you could ever get and it's a NIV or it's a New King James or it's a ESV or it's a, you know, Revised Standard or just any, you know, and you can, but you could try to go on the internet or something else to compare it to. So you don't need boxes and boxes of scripture, you know, to make yourself feel good and to prove to, and this is what he's talking about here, to prove to everyone else that you are a godly man and a holy man of God and an awesome priest and rabbi and master. You have to have all these books to prove that. No, you really, you just need the Holy Bible. And, and then if it's taken away, it should be in your heart. So you don't even need that if it's really written in your heart, right? No, you don't need boxes and boxes of scripture. Um, okay, let's go on. Sorry, I got a red there. <laughs> Large the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues. So see, they enlarge the borders of their garments. You know, they try to dress like, like priests and they try to look different than the common people. Okay, instead of relating to the common people and having relationship with the common people and sharing their relationship that they have with the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, they separate themselves um, and they love the the uppermost rooms and the chief seats in the synagogues you know they want to go sit on the front row of the church pews to why why do they want to go sit on the first row of the church pews to be seen by everybody else that's behind them that's why right they why do they want to be up behind the preacher or uh, up there up above everybody else to be seen by everybody the they want those better seats those things like that they want to be in the uppermost rooms of the feasts you know they want to be treated like they're dignitaries like that they're like the pope gets treated and things like that that's the way the pharisees and sadducees and what jesus warns don't act like that okay and if you see people acting like that they're probably not god's children they're probably the seed of the serpent infiltrating into the church like it talks about in Jude you know that they are they are spots in your love feast they, they they've they've manipulated their way in so they can corrupt right okay let's go on and greetings in the markets and to be called of men rabbi rabbi so they want to be called teacher teacher master master but James said let's, don't worry about being called master because there's greater condemnation that comes along with that you know, so why do you want to put that condemnation upon yourself when you, I'm not saying that it will come upon you, but it could come upon you. So why do you want to even put it on yourself? Why do you want to hold yourself up on a pedestal, you know, uh, in front of all these people or let other people pick you up on a pedestal? You know, um, the world, the world is supposed to hate Christians, not love them. So if the world and the media and Hollywood and all these politicians and all these things are lifting up uh, a so-called holy man or a holy woman, you need to watch that because Jesus said, the world hates you because it hated me first. Okay, it doesn't, the world doesn't accept you because it didn't accept me. So if you're being accepted by the world or these people, men or women are being accepted by the world, you need to watch out because... Jesus only had 120 people when they crucified him that were following him. Okay, this is God incarnate. All right, so you have to think about that, okay? Um, you know, you just got to think about that stuff. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even one. Christ, and all ye are brethren. All right. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Okay, so call... Uh, and call no uh, wait a minute, and all you are brethren. So he says, you are one master, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach is your master, and all ye are brethren. All us are equal. All you are brethren. You're all equal with each other. We're all equal. 
you know, there is no leader of, you know, the church. There is no um, council that should sit over a church and say, this is what we're going to teach this week, and this is who we're going to do this and do that. There don't need to be any of that. There needs to be, like, all of us equal, all of us equal with each other. Yes, there's deacons, and there's bishops, and there's preachers, and there's teachers, and there's all these people, but there's not, like, one or a majority that are over everybody. If they're all equal. They just have different gifts. And we've been manipulated by Satan and the church buildings of today to say the preacher is the highest and this council, the deacons are over, the bishops and the bishops are over, the deacons are this, this, and that. And you know what I mean? Like the Vatican is. The Pope and then these people and these people. It's go it's like, like a worldly government, but it's not because... That's not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like everyone's equal and come, like read in Acts. Read in Acts when when the church is formed, the believers, the church, the believers are formed and pulled together. They're all equal. They're all equal. They all get common things, all common things for all of them. The disciples, the 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 apostles, they all got the same thing as everybody else. They were all common with each other. The, you know, Peter didn't stand over every. He he stood up and he preached to all of them, but he wasn't like, I'm better than you, you know, so listen to everything that I say, you know, um, okay, and you can see that in Stephen, Stephen was, who knew who Stephen was up until the time that he got stoned, right, none of us did, none of us here in the Gospels or anything else, and what happened, he stood up and said to all the leaders and all the Jewish people and all of them this big long thing that, um, that, um, changed the whole world right i mean it changed everything um so don't i'm trying to think where it says um don't think you are something least you fall okay don't hold yourself up and let other people hold you up to, so that you think that you're something in your mind or in your heart because that's right before you're gonna fall pride all right okay so you see that now to end it um this is the last verse. It says everything about don't worship ascended masters, don't want to be ascended masters. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he. Okay, so that's it. Jesus is the only master. Jesus is the only ascended master, ascended Christ. He is the only Messiah. All right, all right. Well, thank you guys. Uh, wake and watch for Yeshua. God is love, and I love God. Amen.